Mr. Tucker Smith. I'm sorry. Hey, hey, yeah. There's too, 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 too many Smiths around. Yeah. yeah. Just to make okay. sure that you're all covered, I don't know, like I said, if you explain, uh, if you know what the guarantee rights are yeah, exactly. Yeah, we had one that was in the FOP when I was Perfect. <laughs> so you know about guarantee rights yeah. and everything, nothing can be used against you in a criminal yeah. proceeding and everything. You've been ordered to answer any questions that we ask. All right? All right. There you go. <laughs> uh, let's see. i got to go over his statements. We're going to be signing some employee yeah, investigator. Huh? Yeah, yeah, you're the employee. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> um, should be it, though. Yeah, you want to date time. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, we've had, uh, I'm saying, talked to a couple of people now, and um, let me read through your statement, get a quick picture. I'm all up to date here. All right. First off, did anybody contact you today and let you know that we were going to talk to you besides us? Nope. Did you talk to anybody else today? Did you talk to Chief or nope. anyone else today? Nope. <laughs> All right. Um, basically, we're going over what happened over there with the accidental discharge, um, kind of circumstances around that. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, there's also some, um, some stuff going on possibly we've been alerted to about some of the timesheets. All right. Mm -hmm. So, if you know what I'm getting at, <laughs> yeah. So we uh, we need to make sure that that is covered right. completely. Right. Um, you know, again, under Garrity, we can't use this in criminal prosecution. You know, any information that we gather. However, you know, I don't worry about it. if you didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, nothing to worry about. There you yeah. go. Yeah. So, yeah. There you go. But then again, this clears everything up, and you know, part of our job is just to do the investigation. Right. We have no. We have no uh, no horse in the race here. We have we don't care how it goes either way, but we just try to gather the information. Right. So hopefully you don't take anything personally that we talk about or, or anything else like that. So you've been a cop long enough that you understand. Yeah, it's 20 years. How much? Almost 20 years. Going on 20? Yep. Where did you start out your career? Hebron, actually. Really? And then I went to Fairfield County. Yeah. And then I ended up going on Buckeye Lake. No kidding. Yeah. So why'd you go there from Fairfield? Um, Let's just say it was a mutual separation for the most part. I, I, I actually had trouble qualifying because I had real bad sleep apnea. And from the 50, I would always miss it by one for whatever reason because I was so drowsy. Yeah. So I went on light duty and then ended up going out on FMLA. Well, while I was on FMLA, they said, well, since you can't qualify, you can't work as a police officer in the state of Ohio. So they said, we'll give you the option of resigning or we're going to terminate you. And the, sh the sheriff came out to my house and he, with the deputy chief and said, you know, we'll pay the unemployment if you, were, if you just resign. And I asked him, I said, what do you think, I'm stupid? Right. So if I resign, I get nothing. Mm -hmm. But I ultimately didn't get anything anyway, so. So you ended up back at Buckeye Lake just to keep your I knew, I knew Andy and yeah. Jimmy over there. Okay. I first went back to Hebron, but yeah. they said because they're Kalia, they can't hire somebody that's been terminated from another agency regardless if they worked there before or not. Hmm. Well, because that's where I went first. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Makes sense. So I but making the money back then that they're making now, I probably would have never left. Yeah, no kid, right? Yeah. I know, believe me, I live there. <laughs> um, all right, let's tell me a little bit about what happened on the 10th. Okay, you want me to start to finish? Start, start to finish. Okay. Do you need your statement to refresh? No, it? actually, I got it. it. Okay. Need to refresh it on a little. Uh, let's see. On the tenth, at about eight forty-six, I uh, was on patrol. Was contacted by phone by the chief. He told me to come down the M section. I'm like, okay. What's going on? He's like, just get down the M section. So I get down there. I'm still on the phone with him for a couple seconds, then he said supposedly somebody's been shot inside a trailer. He said that oh, while you were on the phone call? Right. Okay. And then he turned around and said that the late, the people had called him directly. Um, so I just drive in M section and I see Ver Officer Verbaton's truck sitting there in front of the trailer that they're at, and they're both just standing outside. 
So I, I had already marked it that I was in route there on what four. Okay, so you marked county. Yeah, I marked okay. county that I was in route on possible 52. And then when I got on scene, I asked for 99 traffic. Okay. So we could make entry. Mm -hmm. So as we're standing by the front door, they're trying to figure out how to get in, if they're going to have to kick it in or what they're going to have to do. I said, well, I got a pry bar on the car, I didn't want the pry bar, so they ended up, they were able to get a key. Mm -hmm. So once we, they opened the door, Vermaeten went in, well, let me back up a second. Jimmy asked me if I had a shotgun in my cruiser. And I told him no, because I don't have a shotgun rack or anything in my cruiser. Mm -hmm. He goes, do you have your rifle? I'm like, yeah, I've got my rifle. He goes, go get it and give me your sidearm. Okay. I'm like, Okay, I've never parted with my gun and right. never really planned to like sure, that. But yeah. what are you going to do, Taylor Chief? No, he can't use it. Absolutely not. So, Vermeiden goes in first, goes to the <clears> right. <throat> I mean, we're all fairly close going up, like in three person entry. But Vermeiden goes to the right, Jimmy goes left, but he's kind of not completely in. He's just kind of right behind the door. And as I was coming in, I mean, I didn't, I couldn't even see Jimmy as I was coming through the door. Mm -hmm. The, uh, I heard bang, which I mean, I, it normally your adrenaline would go up, but it didn't really seem to phase me. It was dark in there. I mean, the light was horrible because mm -hmm. I had to give verbatim my flashlight, and I'm just using the light at the end of my rifle, mm -hmm. which didn't give much light. So we continued to clear the house. Found out there was nobody inside. Didn't look like anybody had been inside. Mm -hmm. So go back after the fact, and Jimmy starts trying to explain that he saw a shadow. He thought he saw a shadow getting up off the floor. So he went to draw on him and came up underneath and hit the counter and discharged fire. Okay. The Glock? Yeah, my Glock. Okay. So Which I was, was obviously, you know, police 101, you don't search a house with your finger on the trigger. Right. So obviously, uh, he had to have his finger on the trigger, no hammer, no, no nothing hammer, you no, could have, no. nothing you could have done no. besides, yep, that's it. So Jimmy said he thought that somebody was getting off the ground. Right. Goes up, hits the something, right. or something, gun goes off. Right. Um, so once you heard the bang and everything, you guys kept searching? Did you ask yeah. right then, like, hey, what the hell happened? Well, I could have shot my light over there. Um, and he's like, well, I thought I saw a shadow. Okay. Well, I so hadn't seen, I got in after that gunshot because I wouldn't about right. to stay outside. So you knew right then, though, that he, he's the one to find I out. Didn't know, I, I didn't know. I mean, after, after well, you went in, he said, hey, I thought I saw a shadow. So you assumed that was him firing off the ground. Right? I'm sorry, guys. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Try. There we go. Okay. Andy must have gotten notified, huh? Um, Andy, well versed on everything that goes on in the town with being, you know, having family that, that owns a diner. Yeah. People like to go in and talk. <laughs> sure. So. Yeah, Andy and I will be talking soon. Andy's a good guy. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. Okay. So you heard the bang, you walk there, go inside, hey, you know. And, and, and Jimmy says, yeah, that was me, I saw a shadow. So you knew it was him that fired the shot right away, right? So you're not looking for somebody well, shooting at you. Well, because it's, I mean, I can't say definitively that where I thought the shot came from. I mean, but it sounded like it was on the left side of me. Gotcha. Um, and Jimmy was the only one on the left side. Okay. But you got so a shot. So he told me as soon as we cleared the house what had happened. And then he came up underneath and he thought he shot a, saw a shadow and gotcha. ended up squeezing the trigger. So I started trying to look around for the round because I'm I want to know where the round went. That's right. that's a round out of my gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And him and Vermeiden said, "Well, it must have just went through the floor someplace." I said, well, "There's got to be a hole. Right. There's got to be something. That bullet went someplace." Mm -hmm. And one of the two picked up the casing. I don't know which one because I didn't pick it up. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and then. I went back out to my cruiser to secure my gun, and by then he, one of the Hebron units had showed up. They weren't aware of what Oliver showed up, right? And but he didn't know what happened. 
Okay. Um, and and we, were you told not to tell him what happened? Uh, I was told not to tell Hebron what happened. Yes. Okay. What was the thinking on there, you know? Um, and who told you that to begin with? Chief Hansen. Okay. Why did he tell you that? Um, I don't know if he was embarrassed or just didn't want to get it out until it gets dealt with the way it's supposed to get dealt with. Gotcha. Um, so I get in my crew's room getting ready to leave and him and Vermeaton get in the truck and pull up next to me and there's and Jimmy leans out the window and he's like, you don't tell anybody about this. He goes, I'll handle calling the mayor. Okay. So I, 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 and the funny part about it is, is the woman that claimed all this was going on that has dementia, mm -hmm. I wasn't, I was through her section not five minutes before that. No. And she was standing outside at the end of the road. And I waved her and she just looked at me, never flagged me down, never did anything. Hmm. So. So that was some mental issues going on with the lady. So it's like she's got some right. dementia problems right. and stuff. Okay. Um, so, later on, I mean, I was told I was going to have to do a statement on it, obviously, because I was there. Mm -hmm. um, later on, I went on a call with Hebron, and then I get a call from Peggy Wells, the mayor, obviously, and she wanted to know why Jimmy was trying to call her three times. Mm -hmm. And I said, probably tell you about an incident that happened. I said, but I'm on a call with Hebron right now, I can't talk. She goes, well, call me back when you're done. So I cleared the scene. I called Jimmy. I said, well, I don't know if you got a hold of Peggy or not. I said, she just called me. So if you need to talk to her, you might want to just go ahead and give her a call because you'll probably get her now. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, here's what you're going to do. You're going to come to my house and you're going to put it on speakerphone so I can hear what she has to say. And he didn't want me to tell her that. Oh, he so, so he called, you called her back, but he was in the room. And the first thing I said to Peggy was, gotcha. I'm at Jimmy's house, he's sitting right here. <laughs> but Jimmy didn't want to, Jimmy wanted to hear from the mayor without the mayor right. knowing. Because the mayor and I are close. Gotcha. Yeah. And we talk a few times. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't going to throw her under the bus like that. That's good. You know, because I didn't want her to, you know, act like, we have this big relationship and we're out to get him or whatever. Right. So I didn't want her to act like, oh, have you heard about Jimmy? What's Jimmy out doing? I mean, right. just makes you quite a Yeah. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you do that, she calls, and then uh, at that point, does Jimmy say anything to her? He's just explaining to her about what happened. Okay. She doesn't sound too happy, obviously. Yeah. I think I ever heard the word that, that he wasn't supposed to be working. Yeah. I mean, I did come to his defense and say, well, he is the chief of police, technically, he's on duty 24-7. Right. He lives in the town. You're aware that he, he had, uh, you know, he had some finger, probably right. his finger, and he was off work with his right. finger. Right. Did you know how long he was going to be off, or when he was supposed to come back, or I had heard or say, like, hey, we're going to be off for a while? Well, last week I heard he would be back Monday. This Monday? This, this previous Monday, yeah. Okay, which would have been what date? Uh, uh, what's the date? 15th? Yeah. Today's the 15th. So yeah. he should have been back. Monday would have been the 12th. Right. Yeah. Okay. Who'd you hear that from? Um, let me think. I can't remember if I heard that from Andy or what. I can't. I really can't recollect who told me that he was coming back on Monday. Now, it may even been Peggy that told me. How's Andy know all this? Andy seems to know a lot. Andy is in. He's able to find out a lot. It sure is. And some people put stuff all over Facebook, obviously. Really? Which I'm. I'm not a Facebook person. I don't do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you called dispatch advising you were kind of like giving any traffic, mm -hmm. clear to see. Um, was the county en route at that time? No, know? no. They were never en no. route. Um, no, because they had asked me if I needed, or Hebert marked up and asked if I needed a 10. Okay. And I said no. I said, we've already got two my A units there. And when I got there, I found out Vermeiden was there. I figured he was going to be with him anyway. So, you know, it was such a thing that you can have too many guns going into one place. And Absolutely. Especially a trailer. 
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I think the three of us can handle it just fine. So you didn't ask for a 10, but no. he was showed up showed anyway. Up anyway. Yeah. Okay. But that was after the fact. Right. Okay. Uh, all right, so going back then to um, the time cards. It's come to our attention that there's some time cards that have been filled out, maybe some hours put on there that shouldn't be on there auxiliary-wise. What do you know about that? I haven't seen any logs for any auxiliaries. Okay. And I have a guy who comes and rides with me all the time, and I told him, what, the other day? I said, you need to start making, get a log sheet together, start making a copy, and put it in the reserve book so you can prove that you're coming out right. here and working. Right. Because, I mean, we're not calling Jimmy all the time and saying, hey, Jackson's out here working. Right. So he has no idea. And we've only got a couple that really even put in any time. Okay. Who usually puts in time out there? Uh, the um, James Jackson and uh, Ted Robert. Okay. But she rarely comes out. All right. Anybody else ever come out? No. No. When's the last time you saw some of the guys out there? Read off a couple names off of that. Let me get that on the roster here. As far as A units go, you said James Jackson comes right. out. Is he usually pretty good about his 16 hours a month? Oh, yeah. He's, okay. Uh, ben Justice? He rarely comes out because he's also got a commission as a police officer with a VA. Okay. All right. Uh, Tyler Thompson? He comes out quite a bit, but he just got a job at Hebron. Oh, okay. he's the he's one that got full time yep. or something. Yeah. Okay, we heard about him. Uh, Dory Vermillion? Seen her work once in the last year and a half. Okay. Well, I think she covered one shift. In a year and a half. Yeah. And she's not coming out going her no. 16, no. even when you're not there, you don't think? No. All right. Uh, James Bartow. Is that not really anymore. I mean, his medical issues and everything, he doesn't I come out. I think mean, somebody said something about that. Okay. He has some medical issues, mm -hmm. so he hasn't been coming out. When's the last time you remember he was out? Maybe a month, two months ago. Okay. Somewhere around that line. And then Ted Javert. I'm not 100% sure when she always comes out because she doesn't come out and ride with me. Okay, but she so does come out? Or she does come out. Does come out. Yes. Okay. Do you get those that? Yeah, pretty much. Um, okay. Is there any other auxiliary units on on here that you can make over? Okay. Now, Steve, I was told by a couple people I talked to already that you're a trustworthy guy. I had nothing bad to say about you, which is rare. Quite honestly, it's rare that we get somebody that doesn't have anything bad to say. Um, but we also have those people saying maybe some not so stellar things about a couple of the other guys. Right. Um, which I hear on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, but what I was told over everything is that you're a truthful guy. Right. So, uh, I have no reason not to believe that. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm covering all my bases right, right here. Because okay. What I want to see is come back in, because we're going to get every piece of paper from the last year of anybody who did anything. So, you know, if there's something that doesn't add up there, I don't want to see anybody get hemmed up on it. So, if you know somebody that is definitely not putting their hours in, but is definitely getting credit for hours, I'd like to know. Well, I think there's always been discrepancies, not even just the auxiliaries. It's you know, some of the other paid. I mean, I've had my, my timesheet got altered before, after I signed it. Right. They changed all these hours, and then it put down that I worked 2 to 10 mm -hmm. on a day when I didn't. Okay. And my shift doesn't start at 2. Who altered that? Jimmy put it on there. It wasn't even in my handwriting on the timesheet. Okay. Did Jimmy tell you why he changed it? No. You just got... I said I didn't work 2 to 10. He's like, oh, we'll, we'll make it up another time. Okay. Well, me being worried about getting in trouble, I let everybody in the office know about it. Mm -hmm. The uh, the Mary, which was the one that cuts the paychecks, Michelle's one of the office staff, and Valerie let them know that I didn't work that. And I had them pull the copy of my timesheet. I said, that's not my writing. Okay. How long ago was that? <sighs> it was 
Six months ago? Six months. Do you still have a copy of it? I'm sure there's still one on file. Okay. Alright, so... About six months ago. Like what pay period or anything? Do I know what pay period? Yeah, what month? Not anything exactly. close. Right. It's been a while since I've seen it, so... Summertime or wintertime? Oh, it had to be summer. Alright. Did you ever make up the time? I can't remember if they actually took it off there, because I even went... I even asked Peggy for advice before she even got elected. And I told her, and she's like, well, I would turn around and send an email to Jimmy. And then I would turn around and send one to the mayor and send one to the girl in the office. And you did that? And I did not do that. Okay. And I did not do that for a reason. And what reason was that? Because Jimmy said, we will deal with it on a later date. Okay. And I said, all three people I would have been, um, that I would have been emailing are like this. Okay. So... Yeah, I don't think it would have gone anywhere okay. other than the fact of why are you calling them and Cause you know, driving them when I said it was taken care of. Okay. Did, he, did Jimmy offer any excuse why he put that on there? I can't recollect. I mean, like I said, it's been a while ago. I just know it was written down when I was there at 2, and right. I, I don't start at 2. I mean, I'm usually there three or four hours before my shift even starts, but my shifts never started at 2. So. What time did you think you got? The, did you work that day? I can't remember if I worked that day. What, what day, or what time do you usually get to work? Um, our schedules have changed since then. Back then, what time? That's what I'm trying to think. Um, I want to say that it was uh, like 4 to midnight. So were you working the same amount of hours as the time sheet indicated? I can't even remember. Did you get credit for the four to midnight that night too? No, I wouldn't have got. I don't. I can't remember. All I remember seeing is the end time started as two p.m. I don't know what the out time was, okay. but I, one of the things that just caught my eye was that wasn't my writing. Okay. And I just had not this past pay period, but the pay period before. My whole time sheet was changed again. Everything scratched out. I was promised um, bereavement. And I was promised to get paid for the holiday because we don't work holidays. Mm -hmm. So we've gotten, if you're scheduled that day, you just get your regular straight time. Okay. So they didn't, I ended up working a hol not working a holiday because Jimmy told me I could go ahead and take my bereavement. I can, it was something like take Saturday, Sunday as bereavement because my mom just died a few weeks back. Sorry. And then take, Monday's going to be a holiday. And he said I was going to get paid for the holiday. Okay. And he even marked holiday down on my thing. Okay. Well, there were several things that were changed as far as, you know, overall hours. Um, because they, they, they mess around with ComBank and everything. I, I, they've never had ComBank straight <clears throat> out, as far as I'm concerned. But there's somebody else handling it now. Gotcha. So you didn't come to work on the holiday? Yeah. But you got paid? No, I don't, I don't. I didn't get paid. And I raised... Hell about it because gotcha. I was told by Jimmy that I was going to get paid because <laughs> right. we always have them. Gotcha. And they were like, well, we've got a new administration now and we're going to be won by the book, so we're not paying you. Okay. Before the new administration got in there, is there any other instances where you know somebody got credit for being for working that did not work? Hour wise? Yeah, even like. See, that's the thing. That's, even with, see, like with Jimmy, it'd be hard to explain because. Yeah. He, the old mayor let him work from home. So, well, he, which, yeah, I mean, even, say not Jimmy, anybody else, that Jimmy said, you know what, there's an auxiliary here that didn't get their 16 hours in, but I'm going to put eight hours down so they get their 16 hours in. Just, I've just never seen anybody like that. do that. Okay. No. All right. Um, I said, I personally haven't seen it. Have you heard of it? And I'm done. No, but I'm assuming that's probably what's happening because. These people aren't being made to come out and work. Yeah. And you've got to have 16 through the state as well as 16 through our office. I mean, it's, it's across the board. Have you seen there's no way? Does it seem realistic that these guys are working 16 hours a month? Besides the, Ted Run Jackson? No. Okay. Now, I was told before, because I, I question why the auxiliaries never come out. I'm kind of a straightforward kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And... 
I think we were at the range or something, and Jimmy was telling me that since one of our auxiliaries, it's the, I'm going to tell his name, I don't even know him that well, it's, uh, uh, is he on here? Don't worry, James, Bart, et cetera. Oh, he's not even on this one. When did you guys get this copy? Today. This last one I'm going to know this one they did up though. Probably not. But anyway, he worked for, this guy worked for like VCI and worked for the airport. So he's supposed to be like our crime scene guy. So he doesn't, he's never made to come in and put in hours. And like the guy that the, there's one, an auxiliary had on there, Jason Schilling, which just recently retired. Um, he never came out and put his hours in. But Jimmy told me when we were, I think we were at the range, that it's worth it for him because the guy that just retired does our taser training and our radar training. And the other guy's our crime scene guy. So it's worth it to him for them to only have to work to do our training or to do, you know, if they want to call that guy out for a crime scene. Do you, can you try to remember his name? That's one, I, I don't know him that well. Do you know anybody that would know him if you called uh, Andy? Maybe he knows him? So uh, Andy doesn't know him. <laughs> well, he's the one guy that knows him. Yeah, Andy doesn't know him because nobody ever sees him. Right. Oh, well, there you go. Maybe that's why he's not on the roster anywhere either, though. Yeah. Okay. Anything else we need to know about, man? I mean, we need to... Just kind of get down the bottom of everything and make sure everything's on the up and up. And right. like I said, we, we got to gather all these facts and try to figure out, you know, if it's if everything's good to go, then great. You know, that's awesome. If it's not, then, you know, that's, that's something the mayor has to deal with. Right. Um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head even to ask you now because I think we've got pretty much everything covered. Is, uh, I mean, I've heard rumors just of, like, the timesheet issues. From like Andy. Yeah. Back when he used to work there. Yeah. And we're going to talk to Andy. Yes, sir. Next phone call. And everybody always wondered, you know, how he's getting these hours when nobody sees it. When Jimmy's getting these hours when nobody sees it. But the old man let him work from home. But never had to prove it. Never right. had to prove that he actually was working. Well, yeah, that's under the old mayor. I guess the new mayor. Yeah, that's not what happened with this one. Seems, seems like, yeah, seems like she seems things, she sees things differently, I guess. Yeah, that's what I like about her. That's if she sees something wrong, she says and does something about it, which is the way I am. We we'll I mean, call it straight, you know, we're the same way. Yep. We call it straight, and, you know, if it's wrong, it's wrong. Right. I don't care if you're a cop or if you're a fireman or, you know, you're a citizen over here, you live in a trailer park, it doesn't matter to us, you know. It's like, right's right, wrong's wrong, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find out. If you're doing it right, great. This will back everything up. This investigation will, will, will just solidify the, the righteousness. Yeah, but if right. not, you know, it's going to find out. We're going to find out what's going to, you know, what's happening, and that'll be exposed too. So yeah, that's, he, that's he, just our job to do. Jimmy asked the other day. Uh, well, I was working a council meeting, and he had addressed the council and everything with his attorney, and then <laughs> went to walk out. And he looks at me, kind of mean mugs me, and says, "We're going to talk." Hmm. So I go to walk out. I ended up getting a call. I told Jimmy, I got a call. He's like, no, come into the office first. And we're meeting in a hospital where he's sitting there. He goes, I don't know what's going on. He goes, I don't know who's out here talking stuff about me and about the department. He goes, but if I find out, I'm going to write you out. Was that before and this? And he was looking at me. Was that before this incident happened? That, that was after. After. So it was just on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Monday. Uh, yeah. That's this, this one day. Yeah. So he says that he's not going to tolerate it, and that if anybody talks about it about him or anything, he's he's going to write him up. But this this could be considered a verbal, basically like a verbal write up, a verbal reprimand. And he was looking at me the entire time for the most part when he was saying, "I said, I know you think I'm the one out here telling everybody about stuff." Mm. I said, "But I'm not." I said, "There's a lot of people out here talking." He goes, "Well, who?" I said, don't worry about it. Mm. He goes, who is it? I said, I'm not going to tell you. Well, I want to know who it is. I'm not going to tell you. I said, you want to fire me? You want to write me up? Go ahead. I'm not telling you. Mm. 
So it sounds like you see some things that could be changed out there. There's a lot of things that need to be changed. Anything else brought up or anything else we need to know about? No. Okay. I haven't talked to Jimmy since Monday because I had to call him about a call I was on later that night. But okay. We don't normally. We well, understand. We don't talk. <clears throat> you're not talking to him about this either, right? So if he asked you, right. you just tell him that we told you you're not allowed to, right? Uh, you know, you're not being insubordinate at that point to him because he's not even allowed to ask you. Well, <clears throat> it was brought up about why I told Peggy <clears throat> that he, Jimmy had told me not to tell Hebron, mm -hmm. and I said. Because she went, I ended up telling him, I think it was actually later in the night, I ended up telling him, well, well, Peggy was wanting to get a statement from the Hebron officer. I said, but he got there after the fact. I said, but you told me not to, to say anything to her, or say anything to Hebron or anything. And I said, well, I said, she asked me, I told her. He goes, oh, you're really going to do a brother in blue like that? Basically throw me under the bus? So you did everything I, I, I and I said, Jimmy, I told you before, I'm not going to ever lie to you. You may not like what I have to say, you may not like what's coming out of my mouth, but I'm never going to lie to you. Okay. So. So he's a little torqued off that you're talking to the mayor. Yeah. He, he told me he seemed to think that there, was, that there was some secret squirrel meeting <coughs> going on. Seems to be some rip between the mayor and Jimmy, if I'm reading things right. <laughs> I yeah, it seems like yeah, it seems like me a little bit of stuff. Little, little so. bit. And I, you know, and I try and stay out of it, but Peggy calls me all the time, or she'll stop and talk to me, and then I get the call from either uh, Jimmy or, um, well, it's usually Jimmy that calls me, but I'll either see him drive by or remain drive by, and I'll get a call from Jimmy. What did the mayor want? <laughs> so for Maiden and Jimmy are pretty tight. They're best friends. And gathered that talking that. So they tell each other. I mean, I've got both of them trying to follow me. Mm. But they're not too stealthy. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> okay. I mean, I, it's hard to stay out of the middle of it. You yeah, got the mayor yeah. telling you to do something. You got chief telling you to do something different. Absolutely. Put you and in a bad spot. And I tried to explain to, to Peggy because she said, you know, she could write him up for insubordination mm -hmm. if she tells him to do something he doesn't do it. Right. And I told her, I said, well, Peggy, on the flip side of that is if he tells me to do something and I don't do it and I do what you say, he can write me up for insubordination. Right. Well, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah, you're in a tough spot. No doubt yeah. about that. Not, not whatsoever. You know, so, so to know anything and be in that middle spot is yeah, a tough place. Not, not real. No, I wouldn't want to be there. Now, especially when you get your phone on and you're standing there and all of a sudden it rings and it says, Mayor Peggy Wells. Yeah. <laughs> You know, especially if you're around Jimmy or something, because he's always been perturbed. He's like, why is she always asking you questions and not me? Maybe she just wants a different perspective. I don't know. I don't know. First time, first time I ever met her. Yeah, I've known Jimmy for a long time. First time I met her, so. I mean, I'm not trying to throw Jimmy under the bus or anything. No. I'm just, I'm not going to. Hey, this is all about Yep. I'm putting down exactly what happened from my point of view. <clears throat> so, so let me go back to the in, the uh, accidental discharge incident here. Uh, you were aware that he had his finger amputated, correct? Right. I mean, we all, everyone seemed to have known that. When he arrived on scene, did he basically did he order you to give you his, or I'm sorry, give you him your weapon? He didn't order me to, but he told me to give. He was to give a directive for right. him. Okay. Told me to go get my rifle, and then he wanted my gun. Do you at that time did you know of his status of working? As far as I just had my finger cut off, like I can go back to work. No, I had heard he was coming back to work. Okay, but but you heard it was that Monday, right? You heard that it was the Monday, following Monday, right? That he was already cleared to come back, and you know I never questioned giving him my gun. You know hindsight, you know because the sheriff's department you get put on light duty, they take your badge, your ID, and your gun. We don't so have you, here, so, so you uh, can't turn around and act as an officer right. and take any action for anything. Right. right. Which that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, 
and he didn't have his gun on, but Vermeiden had his back up on him. And of course, when yeah. the chief tells you, give him your gun. Absolutely, yeah. you gotta do it. Yeah. You don't think twice. Even though it's my, my personal gun, it's my departmental issue gun. Did uh, Vermeiden look for the weapon or look for the bullet at all? A short time. Okay. Couldn't find it. Nobody's. Right? Nobody's. And I kind of, I kind of made that an issue too, because I'd let Peggy know about that. And yeah. I said I'm just not comfortable that a round was shot, and my round to my gun do, is yeah, sitting look, in somebody's look, trailer, and yeah. it's unaccounted for. Let me ask you this: Do you guys typically not do a report on something like that, like an official report? Yeah, we do. Well, I mean, we'll do a call record. Right. Now, considering what happened. Right. That would be a full blown report. Any other occasions that you don't do reports on something like that? I mean, ever... If we would just go there and she thought that that's what happened, right? You know, and we ended up going and checking nothing was wrong. There, there was something, more, you know, dementia-wise that maybe she's harming herself. Then we take her to the hospital or something, right? But other than that, no. If then... We would do a call record log and just give a brief description of. Do you why know whether we there's not any call record logs at all, or no report done? Um, Jimmy said he was going to take care because I, I honestly I looked at Jimmy I said you're doing a report on this yeah. not me and so he said he was going to do the report yep so no report was done none so I don't know what you got you got a bullet casing over there I don't know how you guys link your evidence back. I don't even know what they did with the bullet casing because like I said I don't even know who picked it up and that bothers me too yeah it sounds like uh, Jeff picked it up but mm -hmm. um, do they still have it yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um the, the homeowner's son didn't even seem to really care about what happened. Yeah. Apparently, him well, how do you guys link your evidence to? How do, how do you how do you link your evidence to anything? Do you have to have a report number to link your evidence? Okay. Yes. This, so the evidence report is does it go with the report itself? The evidence report number or is that the same as the report number? The same as the report. Number. So if you don't have a report, how do you have an evidence number? Because you still have a call record. I mean, your call record. I don't have anything. Our call record number is our report number as well. Gotcha. So well, whatever evidence we would get would be submitted under that. So if you number. don't have a call record number or a report number, how do you log in evidence without that? You're not supposed to. Okay. All right. Because this report number says eighteen ten fifty five on here on yours. Eighteen. Oh. Yeah, because that's what we have a book. It's got the numbers. Okay. It's like a log sheet of the last calls taken. Yeah. And I did that up because that was supposed to be the next call record that they said that they were going to go to the office and take care of doing. Okay. So I just used that number and put it on my statement. Okay. That same case number? Yeah. No. 156. 156. No, they got 156, 156. on theirs. I'm not looking at that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's 155. Okay. That's a screwy way of keeping track of records anyway. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. You guys need to get a computer system and do that. And you can't even, none of us even know how to go in and look people up for stuff. Really? I mean, with our new computer system, if we want to pull up an old report log or mm -hmm. a call record log one, I'm just going to get in and do it. Yeah, because I talked to um, Hansy for just five minutes there. He said, I don't recall record, report, anything. Which was, was he supposed to have? He was supposed to have saying that I was supposed to do that? No, he no, just got there. Was just, kind of done. Just, there was yeah. just nothing done. And I was like, well, that's I, because the way we do things here is if we have an incident like that, we have to do a report. Right. So that way you can link things back together. Right. You're taking statements, statements have to go somewhere. Right. So you go with report, you know, in the case file, so you have to have it. Um, so that's why I was asking if this is common practice to not do a report on a situation like that. No, I mean we're supposed to do a, at least a call record log on every call we go to. Okay. And that call record log is that a short report basically, or is that something on just your log, on just your run? Uh, it's a short report. It just basically gives the breakdown of time, date, address, just who, what, who was there. there. Yep. Okay. And then a, just a real brief description, not a full narrative of what happened. Do you also have a run log for these? 
do you guys do run logs anything like uh like road log? the old school road logs do you still do those yeah i still do a road log so do you have a road log of this day then obviously right okay and, yeah. those and are, like I said, the sheriff's department has the recording too, I'm sure. Right, and those are all saved too, your road logs. Yeah. And put in with the monthly reports and then put in a big envelope and, right? Okay. Gotcha. I'm learning a lot how you guys do business out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little different. A little different. <clears throat> yeah, and I always try and compare it to the sheriff's department. I always get told this in the sheriff's department. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but it's the right way, way, way to do things. things. Yeah. That's right. There's there is a right way to do things sometimes. There's a different way of doing things. But there's also a right way of doing things and a wrong way of doing things. And you know, just like you know, how many of your guys have access to your evidence room? Two. The evidence tech and the backup. Uh, we've got 23 guys. You know who had evidence to, or access to all of our evidence? Probably yeah. anybody that worked. Right. And I've tried to explain them over and over again, you can't do that. So they need to go in a temporary locker, locked up, right. and then whoever's in charge of the property room the next day takes it out of there and reclassifies it into the property room. Yep. Yep. It's a good way to get hemmed up really, really fast. Well, I said that. I said the attorney general wanted to come in here and do an audit. Yeah. <clears throat> sounds like, you know, sounds like you guys need to, to do some things to kind of Get back in the 21st century a little bit when it comes to that stuff, you know, you, you got to, yeah. because the state, unfortunately, will come in and really rail you, you know, if you're not doing everything right. Well, and that's what I tell everybody, I said, you know, the good old boy way of doing things is over. That's over you can't do yeah, that now. Absolutely. Nope. Not with all these cameras. Nope. Everything's getting recorded. <clears throat> okay. Um, I guess the only other thing is, did Jimmy ever say anything else about not talking to anybody or there'll be repercussions for it? Just when he talked to the three of us, or the the Vermeer and Haas and I, just that we would be written out. If, if he found out for sure and had proof that we were, one of us is the one that was out saying something, then he was going to write us up. Saying something about this particular incident? No, about just before. About people at the, the department, whether it's complaining about Jimmy or gotcha. Vermeer. He says if he, basically if he hears any of that. I got gotcha. you. I just want to clarify that. Yeah. Okay. I got nothing else, man. I think that's good. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, if once you leave here, if you think of something, you know, give me a call back. Um, you know, I think that uh, there's definitely some changes that, you know, you guys may need to start, start thinking about incorporating over there to help yourselves out a little bit. And, uh, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch. I've had a lot of ideas, but they just... Yeah. Well, the People are afraid things. to change. They are. We, we have people here that don't want to change, you know, sometimes, but luckily we have an <coughs> administration that, you know, is, is open to change a lot of times, right. so that's, that's always good. Hey, did you smell alcohol on either Jimmy or Vermatum when that, the night of the incident? No, no alcohol? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. That's our chief. I don't know. I don't think you, either of those two drink. Yeah, that's what I was, I, I was told they don't drink I, at all, yeah. but. If you think of anything like that, man, give me a call back and we'll we'll muddle through all this stuff and you know try not to have to interview you anymore so you can go about your day and not not to have a right. not have a crappy time. And in the meantime, um, don't discuss this with anybody. Um, obviously, Andy's curious and he's calling you now, and you know he probably wants to know Andy what's, what's going on. But you, let him know you can't tell him um, uh, that you've been ordered not to tell. All right, um, and in that way, because I'm going to talk to Andy too. Okay. Um, and if there's information Andy has, I want it. And it sounds like from the people I've talked to and the people that used to work for Buckeye Lake that don't work there anymore, that I've talked to said that he is the man to talk to about some of this stuff. So that is. So I want to want to get with him and get him in here as well and get all the information he has. So if you would mind not calling Andy for a few minutes, because I'm going to give him a call. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Any questions for us? Yeah. Just I couldn't make sure I didn't leave anything out of anything. That yeah, looks like it's pretty any good. Unanswered questions or anything? No, it looks like a good statement. Yeah. Well, no, actually, it looks like a bad statement. Oh, uh, yeah. that's all my typo errors. <laughs> oh, that's all right. We all have those. Okay. Oh, man, I'm going to go off here. Done. 44 minutes. Like yeah, normal. Before 4 o'clock. Oh, right. Right at 4 o'clock. Oh, good. I'll be able to start listening to the game. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Get your insurance stuff figured out, or yeah, kind of. 
not, not overly happy with what they gave me for my truck. I was going home from work the other night and got a head hat on. That is what I heard. What the hell? I saw Girl it. didn't swerve, didn't hit the brakes, didn't do anything. Jeez. Now, I hope you get that set. That's such a weird. Well, they gave me three grand more than I paid for the truck. Well, that's not bad. But it's still not enough to replace it. Right. Not even close. Not even something with, because it was a 2010 Ram 1500 oh. crew cab mm -hmm. with 20 wrench rims and everything on it. And wow. Yeah, I can't find it. You can't even find the 2005 for nine grand. No, I hear you. Mm -hmm. so you get back to the station and you start getting some flack or anything, you know, let somebody know. Okay? I don't, I don't know if I will. <laughs> Let's hope not. Now, hopefully I don't get the question of, so what did you tell them? Ah, you, you simply tell them. That's, that's, an easy one. that's an easy one to take care of. Yep. All right. Hey. All right, buddy. Thanks again, man. No we problem. appreciate it. Be no safe problem. out there, yep. okay? Yep, you too. Are you parked out back over here on the side of the building? I am on the side, yes. Yeah. I'll let you